My name is David Haskia. I uh, work for European as a product developer. Uh, what I'll talk about today is um, European has pointed out in our strategy that we want to have a strategic relationship with Wikipedia. And that means the Wikipedia community, because Wikipedia is very much the people involved in Wikipedia. Uh, in the strategy, which you can find online and is full of very nice words, you don't really get an introduction to why we want that relationship. So that's what I'll present today. And also some examples where I think we can work together. Uh, I'm going to have to assume that you know the basics of Europeana and the basics of Wikimedia, because otherwise I would have no time to, uh, to uh, finish this presentation. Uh, so, uh, but I will say, starting out, that when I say Europeana, I mean the Europeana network. It's a little bit too cumbersome to say every time. The Europeana network consists of about 1,500 European libraries, archives, and museums. And uh, through the Europeana aggregation, we have access to their collections. Uh, I think the main reason, so where we have to start out uh, when defining why it would be good for Europeana and Wikipedians to work together, has to do with the basics of what our organizations want to be. So it's about our missions, uh, it's about the content we have, the communities we have, and the users we have. So if you look at the Europeana mission, you say it's about, it's, you can see that it's about enabling discovery and reuse of glam content, European glam content specifically here. Uh, but what you won't see is any mention of the Europeana portal. We are, many people know us through our portal, but to us it really doesn't matter if that discovery and that engagement takes, takes place on another platform than the Europeana portal. Uh, so this uh, do not suffer from portal envy is an important aspect to keep in mind. We're also a non-profit foundation, and that helps, because so is the Wikimedia Foundation and the Wikimedia chapters. So there's really no problem here, as in sometimes Europeana gets proposals to work uh, with Google or with other commercial companies, and that is always more difficult, uh, above all, for some reasons, because of this uh, profit, uh, non-profit aspect. As you can see, a lot of the words that uh, was part of the Europeana mission is part of the Wikimedia mission as well. I've copied and pasted from three uh, Wikimedia projects, Wikipedia, Wikimedia Commons, and Wikisource. Uh, so you can see it's about, again, it's the multilingual aspect. Uh, Europeana, we... Uh, had content in at least 30 languages, I think. And that's only the metadata. Some of that metadata describes content that is in everything from Sumerian to uh, uh, Latin and Greek. Um, and again, it's about building knowledge, making knowledge and information available. So there's a match here, or rather, it's the Wikipedia ambition that is actually much wider. Uh, we are about cultural and scientific heritage, Wikipedia deals with any subject. We are European focused, Wikipedia is global. So uh, we are actually just doing a little part of what you're trying to do, or the wiki community is trying to do. But still, those goals are complementary. On the content level, we are also largely complementary. Uh, and when I say we in this case, again, it's the Europeana network. Wikipedia has multilingual articles about persons, about subjects, about places, about periods and events, where thousands of people have uh, come together to write reference descriptions about, let's say, for example, um, about uh, Alphonse Mucha, the Art Nouveau artist. Uh, what we have is all the, all, all the Alphonse Mucha collections digitized across Europe in various uh, libraries, archives, and museums, and having those digitized objects available. So in Europeana, there are uh, access to the individual works. And in Wikipedia, there are the contextual articles. Together, those uh, types of information gives uh, a more complete picture. And a lot of the glam, uh, glam outreach that uh, Wikimedia does 
is about helping and getting GLAMs to share content, open content, uh, to the Wikipedia community. So here, I think again, there's a good match. And then we have the user groups, who are largely the same in our case. Uh, we have students looking for information about artists and their works, amateur scientists doing the same and citizen experts, and journalists looking for the quick facts. Something to keep in mind, both for Europeana and for any and all glams, is that Wikipedia has a much, much larger audience than we have. Uh, a person is much more likely to start out looking for information on either Google and Wikipedia than they will ever be in starting to look for that information on your specific museum. Uh, this is true also for Europeana, which is a fairly big organization with a large user base. But I think in the global ranking of websites, Europeana is at spot 25,000. Uh, Wikipedia is number five. Uh, there, it's only sites like Facebook, for example, that beats Wikipedia in size of audience. So if you're a glam and you want your content to be seen, well, a good way is to have your content on Wikipedia. Also, I do think there are complementary communities here. Uh, they might not know it, they might not agree with it, perhaps especially on our side, on the glam side. There's an active community of editors within Wikipedia who are potential volunteers online for, uh, for GLAMS, uh, for helping out in spreading information and knowledge about them as institutions and about their holdings. And Europeana, the Europeana network, of course, through the network, there's access to the curators, librarians, the archivists of all these organizations. And I think the potential of putting these two communities together and making it possible for them to work together, uh, a lot of uh, fantastic things can happen. So those were the basics of why I think it would be a good idea, why it is important for Europeana to have a strategic relationship with the Wikipedia community. I actually think we are not at all unique in that. I think what I just listed here uh, can apply to any library or archive or, or museum. It's just about uh, different scales. So, if that were, if those were the whys, uh, why we should work together, I'd like to go into two cases, more concrete cases on how we can work together in practice. And I think number one is about sharing content. And really, in many ways, Wikipedia are doing their homework there because all the Wikipedia content is openly licensed. There are APIs for how to catch them, if not through Wikipedia, then through other projects that build upon Wikipedia, like DBpedia. So a museum who wants to pull in the basic bi biography of an artist and want to, be, want to do that in a number of languages, well, you don't have to rewrite those articles yourself from scratch. They are waiting there on Wikipedia uh, for you. And if you don't like the quality of that article, well, you can actually improve it uh, based on your own expertise and content. So I'm going to talk about the other way around, how the Europeana network can uh, do the same. So there are two collaboration projects that I can see, or types of projects. One is to share content, and the other is to actually put that content into context, and so create information and knowledge. Uh, when it comes to the first, sharing content, uh, Europeana is next year gonna partner up with a couple of European Wikimedia chapters to build simple tools that will allow any museum collection manager to upload selections or whole sets uh, from their library, archive, or museum repositories, provided that it's open content that follows the uh, license guidelines of Wikipedia. Uh, it's going to be scalable. It's not going to be for European network members only. Any GLAM in any place of the world will be able to use it. And it should be really easy. It should be no harder than to upload a a set of uh, images to Flickr, or uh, even uh, no harder in the simple cases to do the same, uploading a couple of photos to Facebook. 
coupled with that, it's really important that the Wikimedia Foundation, through the Wikipedia, can report back on the usage. Uh, because that's how DLAMS can sell this to their stakeholders. Yes, the painting of uh, our Art Nouveau painting of uh, the of autumn personified was viewed uh, ten thousand times on our own website last year, but it was uh, viewed fifty thousand times on across Wikipedia platforms. So we actually uh, increased our reach by five hundred percent. Those are the kind of numbers that a GLAM needs needs to know that they can get before uh, wanting to sign up to this. This is uh, the, the sketch we're starting out from in this work. So uh, there's a lot to this project. There are a lot of details to this project. Has to do with proper metadata mapping, has to do with proper attribution, and how to make this as simple as possible. But uh, the basics is that we start up next year, we work for two, two years, and if all goes well, we do have that scalable, user-friendly, system for uh, labs to upload content to Wikimedia Commons in place. But uploading content is only the first step. Uh, it makes it available, uh, it makes it usable, but there's also the fact that uh, a huge media library is only useful when it does get to if people can fetch the uh, fetch the media, use them, use it for their own purposes, and very much in this case, use them to uh, include media in Wikipedia articles, uh, to make those articles better. Um, and I'd like to base that on a Europeana project that we are running uh, to show that we want to live as we um, to live as we learn. Uh, we are holding. The next three years, we will be uh, running a uh, campaign, crowdsourcing uh, personal uh, histories, uh, World War I memorabilia, pictures, letters, other memories. They will be collected at, uh, at, in a roadshow across Europe. If you've ever seen uh, programs like uh, when people come to uh, a certain place with their antiquities and uh, antiques and they get them uh, valued, it's a little bit similar to that, but it's not about estimating how much that, uh, that uh, diary from World War I is, it costs. It is about getting that World War I diary digitized. So we have collection days across Europe. There are online, uh, online possibilities to submit content as well. We're gonna go through pretty much all the European countries that were directly involved in World War I. Uh, leading up to 2014, which is the 100-year centenary from when the war started. All the texts, all the metadata that is collected is available under a CC0 license. All the media is available under CC by Share Alike, thus making it available, for example, to reuse on Wikipedia. So we have all this content. Here's a, a screenshot from the site. World War One in pictures, letters, and memories. Uh, but as I said, uploading content is only the first step. What do you then do with it? And again, I'll take a concrete example. You see the, you see the editor's picture. Uh, submitted to Europeana at one of these uh, collection days, the, uh, I think it was the grandchildren, the great grandchildren of this German man called uh, Rudolf Kammerer. He was a uh, seaman on a German auxiliary cruiser during World War I. And submitted to us for digitization were postcards uh, with pictures of his ship that he sent home to his family, but also uh, uh, large parts of the diaries that he kept all through uh, his experiences in the war. And Again, like I say, this content is already in Europeana. If there are Wikipedians out there who want to use it, please help us out creating a good uh, template, source template to get it out uh, and in use. And I'll, get, I'll continue with the example. This is what it looks like in Europeana. Here you see the postcards. Here you see uh, every page of the, uh, of the uh, diary. And how can this 
help uh, the Wikipedia community? Well, if you look uh, what is on Wikipedia, there is already a Wikipedia article about this ship. It was actually a uh, civilian ship that was converted for use in war. Uh, but this article could certainly, I think, be improved by including some of this content as sources or directly in the article. Uh, the equivalent English article is very sparse, almost a stub, and needs, uh, needs uh, uh, references that we could help out with as well with this content. On the other hand, the English article about this ship, a different ship, is very rich. And there is a link in this article that goes to uh, a stub, a non-existing uh, stub for, for the ship that Rudolf served on. But actually, this ship was sunk as a result of the actions of the ship that Rudolf was on. So it was a mine layer, and this battleship was sunk uh, hitting one of those mines and here we can see this then the potential connection between these personal histories of World War One and how they might be worked in uh, to uh, to Wikipedia articles and by doing that also then we at Europeana will find a much larger audience uh, for these uh, stories and also get these stories actively used and engaged with by a community of, of interested uh, uh, Wikipedians and others. So I'll go back here and again uh, speak about then how here, uh, here it's me throwing out a question to the, uh, to the wiki community here is how can we in the best way make sure that content like this actually does get used by Wikipedia and Wikipedians. Uh, should we uh, should we get ourselves one of those fancy Wikipedians in residence to help out? Mm -hmm. Do we uh, should we hold World War One themed editathons where we put together uh, Wikipedians interested in World War One, together with uh, World War One experts that are part of the network of the project that we are running? Or uh, should we next year ha uh, ask uh, and uh, contribute to organize a special section of? Wiki loves monuments, where uh, have a special theme uh, to photograph uh, sites and monuments that are related to World War One. These are different ways that this uh, can be uh, can be done, uh, and this is these are also the similar ways that individual library, libraries and archives and museums could work together with the Wikipedia community. It's about finding the themes identifying where is your content strong, where is your expertise strong, and helping out to spread that content and share that expertise and get it out on Wikipedia. Again, uh, not only to be nice to Wikipedia, but to actually fulfill your mis mission as a library or archive or museum to, make, uh, to uh, be able to spread your information and knowledge to as many citizens as possible. So. I've gone through the whys, I've gone through two hows, um, so now it's about the question time. Uh, do you agree? Uh, do you disagree? Or uh, do you have any input? Thank you. Any questions? Yeah, hi. I've got a question regarding the um, image point you were making. You said that images in general are going to be released as CC by SA. How is that going to work for imagery where people are obviously 70 years dead and therefore are in the public domain, especially if regarding personal drawings of that soldier you spoke of? Uh, how is the, how's the um, yeah, correction and how, how do you find out about the actual copyright status of photographs and, and drawings you have within the collection you mentioned? Uh, to be honest, right now we are applying CC by SA uh, as a blanket statement across this, across these media. We have collected about 25,000 objects, so we have not had the ability to go through them uh, step by step. But we believe that it's better to publish and possibly be damned than the other way around. So if you find something that is, is in the public domain, 
if you upload it to Wikipedia, we won't mind if